sweet peace and for faith to increase and ever sleep let me bring but you cannot have a rest or be perfectly
Tonight, O oh Heavenly Father, we yield our bodies, we yield our souls to you. We invite you now in the name of Jesus to bless us in this session. May your name be glorified in all things. We pray that our all will be on the altar of sacrifice laid. We pray through the power of the Holy Spirit that you'd speak to us tonight in accents loud and clear. And I pray that the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen and amen. I greet you this evening with Jesus' joy. And so excited that you could join us here on the 777 Prayer and Health Ministries. We are so excited that you could be with us in this space. And we are praying by the grace of God as we spend time together in the Word of God that you will be richly blessed tonight. If you're joining us for the first time, we welcome you. If you're joining us for the umpteenth time, as we would say, we welcome you. We're excited that you could join in tonight's session. We continue our study on salvation and the sanctuary. And tonight, the focus of this presentation will be on the meat offering. So if you're out there, you're hearing me clearly. This is coming through to you clearly. Last week, we focused on the drink offering. And this week, we will be focusing on the meat offering. Go right ahead and type that in the chat. Type that in the chat out there as we begin. And as we begin this evening, we want to read for our theme text. Uh, we will look at Leviticus 2 and verse 1. And we will also look at Leviticus 6. 14 through 23. So Leviticus 6, 14 through 23, and Leviticus 2 and verse 1. We pray that God will bless you as you hear the word of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Reading uh, from the New King James Version, Leviticus chapter 2, verse 1. When anyone offers a grain offering to the Lord, his offering shall be of fine flour, and he shall pour oil on it and put frankincense on, on it. Leviticus 2 verse 1. Leviticus chapter 6 verses 14 to 23. 
This is the law of the grain offering. The sons of Aaron shall offer it on the altar before the Lord. He shall take from, from it his hand and full of the fine flour of the grain offering with its oil and all the frankincense which is on the grain offering and shall burn it on the altar for a sweet aroma as a memorial to the Lord. And the remainder of it, Aaron and his sons shall eat with unleavened bread. It shall be eaten in a holy place. In the court of the tabernacle of meeting, they shall eat it. It shall not be baked with leaven. I have given it as their portion of my offerings made by fire. It is most holy, like the sin offering and the trespass offering. All the males among the children of Aaron may eat it. It shall be a statute forever in your generations concerning the offerings made by fire to the Lord. Everyone who touches them must be holy. And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, this is the offering of Aaron and his sons, which they shall offer to the Lord beginning on the day when he is anointed. One tenth of an ephah of fine flour as a daily grain offering, half of it in the morning and a half of it at night. It shall be made in a pan with oil. When it is mixed, you shall bring it in. The baked pieces of the grain offering you shall offer for a sweet aroma to the Lord. The priest from among his sons who is anointed in his place shall offer it. It is a statute forever to the Lord. It shall, it shall be holy burned. Holy burned. Verse 23 and last. For every grain offering for the priest shall be holy burned. It shall not be eaten. This is the word of the Lord for the people of the Lord. Amen. And we say thanks be to God who gives us his word as a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. The prophet Daniel prophesied in Daniel 9.27 that Jesus Christ would cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease. The Bible says in Daniel 9, 27, he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate even until the consummation and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. Ladies and gentlemen, Daniel, the prophet who spoke in ancient times and his words are of significant import for us at the end of time, declared that Jesus Christ, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world, would cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease. If you carefully examine this text, and you carefully examine the subject matter of the meat offering, reference is made to two great divisions of offerings, sacrifices with and sacrifices without blood. The meat offering, the subject of or contemplation in this evening's presentation, belonged to the class of sacrifices without blood. Uh, type that in the chat. The meat offering belonged to the class of sacrifices without blood. For there was neither flesh 
nor blood in the meat offering. When we look in the Old Testament, I'll take you back to Genesis 1, 29. The same expression used here is used in reference to the meat offering. The word meat mentioned in this text. The original meaning of the word that is first used in the Bible here in Genesis 1, 29. Let's hear the word of the Lord. Genesis 1, verse 29. And God said, see, I have given you every herb that yields seed, which is on the face of all the earth, and every tree whose fruit yields seed. To you it shall be for food. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, the word here used for meat as first used here in the Bible is in reference to food. And in this sense, the term is utilized in connection with this meat offering. The meat offering consisted of flour and oil and frankincense as was read in Leviticus chapter 2 and verse 1. And in some cases, when you study the Old Testament, the flour was baked into unleavened cakes or wafers before being offered. The bread of the meat offering was never to be made with leaven. Every meat offering, ladies and gentlemen, was seasoned with salt. Uh, this offering, according to the word of God, was spoken of as a thing most holy of the offerings of the Lord made by fire. Walk with us to Leviticus chapter 2, uh, verse 14, 4 through 13. Leviticus chapter 2, verse 14. 4 through 13. Oh, 4 through 13. And if you bring as an offering a grain offering baked in the oven, it shall be unleavened cakes of fine flour mixed with oil or unleavened wafers anointed with oil. But if you bring your, but if your offering is a grain offering baked in a pan, it shall be a fine flour unleavened mixed with oil you shall break it in pieces and pour oil on it it is a grain offering if your offering is a grain offering baked in a covered pan it shall be made of fine flour with oil you shall bring the grain offering that is made of these things to the lord and when it is presented to the priest he shall bring it to the altar then the priest shall take from the grain offering a memorial portion and burn it on the altar. It is an offering made by fire, a sweet aroma to the Lord. And what is left of the grain offering shall be Aaron's and his sons. It is most holy of the offerings to the Lord made by fire. No grain offering which you bring to the Lord shall be made with leaven. For you shall burn no leaven nor any honey in any offering to the Lord made by fire. As for the offering of the first fruits, you shall offer them to the Lord, but they shall not be burned on the altar for a sweet aroma. And every offering of your grain offering, you shall season with salt. You shall not allow the salt of the covenant of your God of your God to be lacking for your for your from your grain offering. With all your offerings, you shall offer salt. Verse 14. If you offer a bur a grain offering of your first fruits to the Lord, you shall offer for the grain offering of your first fruits green heads of grain roasted on the fire green sorry grain beaten from full head amen indeed no leaven or honey was allowed in any of the meat offerings for leaven indicated malice and wickedness and honey uh, turns sour and leads to fermentation 
Now, when we look carefully that the qualities of salt are really directly opposite because salt removes and prevents corruption, it is also an emblem of friendship. The salt of the covenant was never to be omitted from the meat offering, thus reminding God's people of his protecting care and his promise to save us and that only the righteousness of Jesus Christ could make the service acceptable to God. Uh, walk with me through the sacred pages of scripture. A portion of the meat offering was burned on the brazen altar, whether it was flour or unleavened cakes, also a portion of the oil and all the frankincense. Walk with us to Leviticus 6 and verse 15. Hear the word of the Lord. Leviticus 6 verse 15. He shall take from... From it his hand full of fine flour of the grain offering with its oil and all the frankincense which, which is on the grain offering and shall burn it on the altar for a sweet aroma as a memorial to the Lord. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, so we see from the word of God that a portion of the oil and all the frankincense and in verse and verses 16 and 17, we also see that the remainder of this was eaten by the priest in the court. If a priest offered a meat offering, no portion was eaten, but the entire offering was burned on the brazen altar. The high priest offered a meat offering Every single day that is serving wherever flour or cakes were offered in connection with any other offering, it was called a meat offering. Walk with me tonight. The offering for the sinner to pour to bring even a wild turtle was a meat offering or a trespass offering. So if an individual was poor, unable to even bring that turtle dove, they could bring the meat offering or the trespass offering unto the Lord. There was no oil or frankincense in this offering. In the offering for jealousy, the oil and frankincense were also left out. No frankincense was ever added to the meat offerings that brought iniquity to remembrance. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, the meat offering was a very common offering and was united with all burnt offerings. Walk with me to Numbers 15, uh, 30, uh, Numbers 15, 3 through 12, I believe, that speaks to this fact. In Numbers chapter 15, verse 3, and you make an offering by fire to the Lord a burnt offering or a sacrifice to fulfill a vow or as a free will offering or in your appointed feast to make a sweet aroma to the Lord from the herd or the flock. Then he who presents his offering to the Lord shall bring a grain offering of one tenth of an ephah of fine flour mixed with one fourth of a hin of oil and one fourth of a hin of wine as a drink offering you you shall prepare with the burnt offering or the sacrifice for each lamb or for a ram you shall prepare as a grain offering two tenths of an ephah of fine flour mixed with one third of a hin of oil and as a drink offering you shall offer one third of a hin of wine as a sweet aroma to the Lord. And when you prepare a young bull as a burnt offering or as a sacrifice to fulfill a vow or as a peace offering to the Lord, then shall be offered with the young bull a grain offering of three tenths of an ephah of fine flour mixed with half a hin of oil and you shall bring as the drink offering half a hin of wine as an offering made by fire a sweet aroma to the lord first praise, thing, amen praise the name of the lord so we see ladies and gentlemen 
that the meat offering was a very common offering among God's people and was sometimes united with the burnt offerings. It was offered every morning and every evening on the brazen altar in connection with the morning and evening burnt offering. Now, the meat offering of first fruits was green ears of corn dried by the fire, even corn beaten out of full ears. The Bible tells us clearly this in Leviticus chapter 2, 14 through 16. Now, fascinating, one scholar declared that this was very interesting as it regards God's people, the meat offering of first fruits. We understand, ladies and gentlemen, the significance of this offering. We recognize that the word meat is translated as food, and the meat offering consisted of flour and oil and frankincense, and sometimes the flour was baked into unleavened bread. Quoting the words of Andrew A. Bonar in regard to the significance of the green airs, he states, and I quote, a peculiar typical circumstance attend these. These are ears of corn, a figure of Christ, and ears of the best kind, for so the Hebrew intimates. They are dried by the fire to represent Jesus feeling the wrath of his father as when he said, my strength is dried up in me. The whole force of my being is dried up. Ladies and gentlemen, walk with us to Psalm 22 as the savior of the messianic psalm speaks to this fact. Psalm 22 and verse 15. Psalm 22 verse 15. Sorry. My strength is dried up like a pot shed, and my tongue clings to my jaws. You have brought me to the dust of death. What an affecting picture of the man of sorrow. Furthermore, the psalmist declares in the 102nd division of the psalm and verse 4, the psalmist declare of Jesus says, I am withered up of the, of like the grass. Ladies and gentlemen, how like this very life, ladies and gentlemen, the best ears of the finest corn in the plains of Israel are plucked while yet green. And instead of being left to ripen in the cold breeze and on the genial sun or withered up by the scorch, Fire. It was thus the only pure humanity that ever walked on the plains of earth was wasted away during the thir the three and th three and a th thirty thirty one during during his ministry, ladies and gentlemen, during his time in the name of Jesus, during his time here on earth, brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ, he suffered much by the heat of wrath, he that which he did not deserve. He suffered the shame and the ignominy that we deserve. Jesus was wasted away on this earth in an effort to save humanity. And while obeying night and day, with all his soul, with all his strength, with all his might, the burning wrath of God was drying up his frame. He was beaten out of full ears. He's, he was bruised. He was battered for humanity. And last tonight, because the Bible declares by his stripes, we are healed tonight. He was prepared for the altar. And though he were a son, the Bible says he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. And it is after this preparation that he's a perfect meat offering, fully devoted in body, mind, and substance to the Lord. I want you to know tonight that Jesus gave his all for you. I want you to understand tonight that he is the, the ultimate meat offering. I want you to understand that he is a perfect meat offering, fully devoted, body, mind, and substance. Jesus, he suffered for you. Ladies and gentlemen, I observe from the text as I peruse carefully the sacred text, the Bible makes it very clear in all this. He is first fruits. 
intimating that many more shall come. He, Jesus Christ, the first fruit, then all that are his in like manner, we are his descendants. We too must be conformed to the will and the way of Jesus in all things. And here it is clear from the word of God that we must be conformed to him in self-dedication and self-renunciation. We must seek to please the Father in all that we do. We have come to an age, ladies and gentlemen, when men are seeking to please men and to honor and to pay homage to men. But we must pledge allegiance to the Lamb. He has left us an example saying, I do always those things that please him, even under the blackest of sky. Jesus Christ did the things that pleased his father. Mm -hmm. Listen to me tonight, my friends, the meat offering, it typified the full surrender of all we have and all we are to the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to repeat that to you tonight, ladies and gentlemen, because I want you to understand that the meat offering, it typified full surrender. Can somebody type full surrender in the chat out there? I submit to you that we must be totally surrendered to Jesus Christ. We cannot be half-hearted. We cannot be a wishy-washy. We cannot be in and out. We must be totally surrendered to his will. And friends, I have come to the recognition that the ones who will make it into glory are those who have surrendered their will to Jesus Christ. I want you to know that this is the significance of the meat offering. And I've come to the realization that self must die in order for me to be totally surrendered to Christ. Somebody type in the chat out there, self must die. You know what is destroying the work of the living God in the last days of earth's history? It is self. You know what is causing chaos and mayhem in the body of Christ? It is self. You know why you hate me and I hate you and we hate each other? It is self. Ladies and gentlemen, when self is upon the throne, we do all kinds of foolishness. When self is enthroned, we carry out all kinds of evil deeds. But when we are surrendered to Jesus Christ, when self dies, brothers and sisters, Sisters, self when it dies it it means that jesus christ is reigning supremely upon your heart and i want you to know tonight that the meat offering is, is a reminder to every last believer in the last days of earth's history that full surrender is necessary if we will make it into god's kingdom friends Tonight, I want you to recognize how dangerous self is. It will destroy you. It will bring you down. It is a dangerous thing. In, in the book, ladies and gentlemen, written by the prolific pen of the prophetess Ellen White, she makes it clear in testimonies to ministers and gospel workers 491 and i quote she says sometimes a man who has been placed in responsibility as a leader gains the idea that he is in a position of supreme authority and that all of his brethren before making advance moves must first come to him for permission to do that which they feel should be done such a man is in a dangerous position. He has lost sight of the work of a true leader among God's people. Instead of acting as a wise counselor, he assumes the prerogative of an exacting ruler. God is dishonored by every display of authority and self-exaltation. I say to you tonight, God is dishonored by every such display of authority and self-exaltation. No man standing in his own strength is ever to be in 
to be mind and judgment for another man whom the Lord is using in his work. No one is to lay down man-made rules and regulations to govern arbitrarily his fellow workers who have a living experience in the truth. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a dangerous position to be in when self is enthroned on the heart. But the meat offering tonight is a timely reminder of full surrender of all we have and all we are to the Lord Jesus. Hear the Apostle Paul. In Galatians 2 and 20, he says, I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. In the life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Jesus will not return, ladies and gentlemen, until the character of Christ is fitly reproduced in every last one of his followers. I hear say tonight, let Jesus be upon the throne of your heart. Let Jesus reign in your lives. Surrender yourself totally to him and let him have his way. And friends, I must hasten on to draw another lesson from the meat offering. Lesson number one, the meat offering typified full surrender of all we have and all we are to the Lord. If that's clear, come on, say amen in the chat out there. Now, the second thing I want to bring to your attention in closing, this offering was always presented along with some animal sacrifice. I repeat, this offering was always presented along with some animal sacrifice, showing the connection between pardon of sin and consecration to the Lord. Oh yes, brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ, he pardons Jesus Christ. He consecrates and he transforms his children. It is after an individual's sins are forgiven that he lays all upon the altar to be consumed in God's service. What am I trying to say? When you're totally surrendered to Jesus Christ, when your all is consumed upon the altar, you will declare not I but Christ. Be honored, love exalted not i but christ be seen be known be heard not i but christ in every look and action not i but christ in every thought and word and everything that you do you would be spent and be spent for jesus christ everything that you do ladies and gentlemen you will be doing it for the glory and honor of our king self would be lost and the cause of jesus christ will become your number one priority the meat offering tonight is speaking in the 21st century. The reason the work is suffering, the reason mission languishes is because self is still upon the throne. Oh, thrones of many hearts, ladies and gentlemen. But tonight, God has brought this word to remind you that if you and I are ever to make it, we must surrender all. And if you and I are ever to accomplish this work, we must consecrate our lives totally to the cause of God. Now, now, finally tonight, in the meat offering, something fascinating I discovered, like the sin offering, provision was made for the poor. <laughs> oh Lord, help me, Jesus. Help. I say in the meat offering, like the sin offering, provision was made for the poor. Type the word poor in the chat out there, poor. I say in the meat offering, like the sin offering, provision was made for the poor. The wealthy class, they baked their meat offerings in an oven. The individual in moderate circumstances on the fire, while the cakes that were baked by the poor in the frying pan, they were equally acceptable to Jesus Christ. What am I trying to say to you tonight? 
whether you're rich, whether you're poor, whether you're in between, ladies and gentlemen, your offering is accepted by God from once it is given from a genuine heart. Uh, sometimes we believe that because we have power, because we have wealth, because we have prestige, we are closer to God. Don't fool yourself, disabuse yourself of the idea tonight that because of your power and your prestige and your position, you're going to be nearer to God. The meat offering is a reminder that the wealthy as well as the moderate, in addition to the poor, they were all equally acceptable because at the foot of the cross, the ground is level. And I'm mighty glad tonight that we serve a God who does not watch the faces or the pockets of individuals. We serve a God who looks beyond our faults and he sees our desperate need for him. We serve a God who treats the rich man the same as the poor man. We serve a God who cares for all his children. And the meat offering is a reminder, ladies and gentlemen, that we are all equal at the foot of the cross. You are not better than I am. I am not better than you. We are all children of the most high God. We were bought with a price, the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And the meat offering in the 21st century that there is equality at the foot of the cross that there is unity at the foot of the cross and that as children of God we are all one in Jesus and tonight tonight my friends I submit to you that in the meat offering type met anti-type how do I know well, walk with me as I conclude this message tonight. I say to you upon the authority of God's word that in the meat offering, type met anti-type. Type, Leviticus chapter 2, 1 through 3. Read the word of the Lord for us in Leviticus chapter 2, 1, 2, 3. This is type. And I want you to know tonight, type met anti-type. Leviticus chapter 2, verses 1 to 3. When anyone offers a grain offering to the Lord, his offering shall be of fine flour, and he shall pour oil on it and put frankincense on it. He shall bring it to Aaron's sons, the priests, one of whom shall take from, from it his hand full of fine flour and oil with all the frankincense. And the priest shall burn it as a memorial on the altar, an offering made by fire, a sweet aroma to the Lord. The rest of the grain offering shall be Aaron's and his sons. It is most holy of the offerings to the Lord made by fire. Bless the name of the Lord, ladies and gentlemen. It was a thing most holy of the offerings of the Lord made by fire. That is type, but walk with me to the anti-type in Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Uh, here Paul saying to the believers, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And not do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is this good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I submit to you tonight that type met anti-type in the meat offering. In, Levit in Leviticus chapter 2 and verse 9, the meat offering was a sweet savor unto the Lord. Come here, Paul, in Philippians 4 and verse 18. When God's people make sacrifices for him, it 
is an odor of a sweet smelling savor, well pleasing unto God. I submit to you tonight that type met anti-type in the meat offering in Leviticus 2 and verse 13. Every oblation of thy meat offering shall thou season with salt. With all thine offering thou shalt offer salt. That's type. But in Mark 9 and verse 50, the Bible says, have salt in yourself. Come on, church of the living God. In Colossians 4 verse 6, let your speech be always with grace seasoned with salt. I submit to you tonight that in the meat offering type met anti-type. But ladies and gentlemen, as you leave this time of study and prayer, never forget that the meat offering typified full surrender of all we have and all we are to the Lord. But the meat offering is also a reminder that total consecration, even when God has pardoned our sins, he calls us to total consecration to his service. And when we would have surrendered to him, we will be utilized in his service. But finally, it is a reminder that whether you're rich, whether you're moderate, whether you're poor, from once your offering is brought with a heart of contrition, a heart surrendered to Jesus Christ, all were acceptable and all will be acceptable unto the Lord tonight. I ask you the question that the song at the beginning of tonight's presentation started with, is your all on the altar of sacrifice laid? This is the question that I ask you tonight. And tonight, I warn for you, if that's your desire, I warn for you to share in that chat out there, hashtag, Total surrender. Hashtag total surrender. Is your all on the altar of sacrifice laid? Is your all, my friends, on that altar tonight? You have longed for sweet peace and for favor to increase. And you have earnestly, so fervently, oh, you've really prayed. Oh, yes, but you cannot find rest nor be perfectly blessed until all on the altar is laid. Is your all on the altar of sacrifice laid? Your heart does the spirit control. Now you can only be blessed and have peace and sweet rest after you've yielded unto the Lord your body and your soul. Oh, yes, that's what he wants this evening, ladies and gentlemen. Everything, everything, everything on the altar. What's your decision tonight? Is your all on the altar? Go right ahead and type in that chat, total surrender. Total surrender. I see, I see those decisions. Total surrender. Tonight, as we offer ourselves as meat offerings, full surrender, if you please, unto the Lord, Lord Jesus. We long to be perfectly whole. We want thee forever to reign and to live in our souls. Break down every idol. Cast out every foe. Lord, wash us and we shall be whiter than snow. Lord Jesus, for this, I most humbly entreat. I wait, blessed Lord, tonight at thy crucified feet. To those who have sought thee, thou never said no. Now wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Tonight, O loving Jesus, we submit and surrender our all to you. In the name above every name, we pray that we will be fully surrendered to you, totally unreservedly 
all we have and all we are will be surrendered upon the altar. May we be crucified tonight with Christ. May Christ living us. May the life we live by, we live in the flesh, we live by faith. And the Son of God who gave himself for us. I thank you for every decision in this room tonight. I thank you for every person who has typed in the chat. Total surrender. I pray as we near your soon second return. That Lord we will be fully surrendered to you. Sold out to your cause. May we be spent by you on your mission field. Use us now, Lord, continually, and bless us with your grace. For we pray this in the mighty and the power, powerful name of Jesus. And God's children say amen and amen. To those who are watching live, this is where our live stream will end. But if you want to hop in the room, you can do so if you have a question or a comment. 813-1521-5055. We meet seven in the morning, seven in the evening, seven days per week on this global prayer movement. God bless you till we meet again. Good night.